Hi, my name is Peter. Hi, I'm John Lennon. And for the second consecutive year, I'm Joseph Sylvia. Hi, I'm Cameron. And this is What's Cooking at Riverview. This is Zach Gittleman. And this is Peter Palumbo. And, and welcome to What's Cooking at Riverview, Sports Edition. I'm here with um, Peter Palumbo, and today we're going to talk about sports. So, Peter, the NFL draft has just, there's been a lot of action been going on in sports lately. We got the NBA playoffs, we've got the, N the NFL draft, we've had the NHL playoffs, opening day baseball, a month into the baseball season. Just a lot of great things going on now. College spring games um, for spring training and uh, for football. And it's been a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of great action. But first, we're going to get into the NFL draft um, recap. So in the first pick, the, the, the uh, Arizona Cardinals take um, quarterback Kyler Murray, Oklahoma, and supposed to, a, a playmaking quarterback, good run, scrambling quarterback. Supposed to be a stellar quarterback. But what brings me back to this question is the Cardinals had high draft pick last year. And as if you all folks remember, the Cardinals drafted Josh Rosen, the pocket passing quarterback out of UCLA. And they go and they take Kyler Murray. What 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 do you think? Why do you think the car what do you think the Cardinals see in Kyler Murray rather than what they see in Josh Rosen? I mean Kyler Murray has been like the spotlight of college football like everyone knows that he's probably going to be like a star player so yes he is he's very athletic he's a good he's good pop he's good he can scramble you know in the league these days you know these kind of quarterbacks are are built differently than what we're used to you know and you go sure. back into the days when you think about Elway and Montana and and Steve Young and Peyton and Eli and Brady and and Breeze and all these guys. These guys were pocket passing, scrambling quarterbacks. Now you see more in the league. You look at guys like Deshaun Watson, Marcus Mariota, um, Jared Goff, Patrick Mahomes. These guys are scrambling quarterbacks. You know, they're also po somewhat are pocket passing ability. How do you think Murray is going to do? Do you think he's going to live up to the expectations of of what everyone's talking about of how good this guy could be? I think he will. I mean. I've seen like highlights of him in college. He seems pretty good, and like the way he scrambles, it's like, very effective. <laughs> He's overcome a lot of obstacles, you know. And you know, I have to ask you another thing now. Um, so the Giants take, as many of you folks don't know, this is the second time in a generation that we've seen two brothers play in the league at the same time. The 49ers in the second overall pick, they took. Um, they took a uh, defensive end from Ohio State, Nick Bosa. His brother, Joey Bosa, plays for the San uh, San D Los Angeles Chargers. What do you think about Nick Bosa and what he brings to this league and what he brings to the defense on the 49ers with DeForest Buckner and Tyreek Armstead? What do you think he brings to this team? I mean, he'll definitely make a bigger impact for their defense. Um, probably going to be very much improved, and they're probably going to play much better. <laughs> Yes, he's the kind series. of guy that brings a lot of a lot of good abilities. He's able to stop the run. He's able to get to the quarterback, and he has great natural ability. And he shows the ability to win in many ways. And in this league today, it's more of an offensive-oriented league. You know, you guys, you guys back then, you know, there was always a saying, "Defense wins you championships." But now it's more of you saw you saw last year, you know, the Patriots, great defense in the in the playoffs. Defense really came together and really stepped it up. You know, you look at the Rams, great offense. Todd Gurley, you know, Jared Goff, you know, Robert Woods. But now we're going to get into our third overall pick. So, Peter, the New York Jets, last year they took Sam Darnold for the for third overall pick, pocket passing quarterback out of UC, USC. Brilliant player, has a lot of potential, really good, tall, strong, good. And so the Jets take um, the best player in the draft, in my opinion, Quentin Williams, 6'3", 303 pounds out of Alabama, a very well-built, good defensive tackle who has a lot of, 
a lot of quickness and a lot of strength and, a, and is a good run stopper and a good pass rusher. What do you think he brings to this young Jets defense along with Leonard Williams and Dar Darren Lee and Avery Williamson and, uh, and Trumaine Johnson? What do you think he brings to this defense? I mean, he's definitely going to help with the run game. Um, their defense is going to be much more improved. But I think they need some wide receivers and, like, a better offense. You know, when I was thinking about that, you know, I look at guys on that team, you know, a great guy. I really like this guy, undrafted free agent, Robbie Anderson out of Temple. This guy really, when he's healthy and when he's on the field and he's competing, this guy could be good. He's electric. He has a, he has a lot of good playability in, in him. He's young. And, you know, you got Jermaine Curse, veteran wide receiver, Great player. He had some great years in Seattle. I think he still has a lot left of him. You know, you look at Chris Herendon, you know, the Jets signing Le'Veon Bell, you know, C.J. Mosley. There's a lot of excitement going on in, in, in New York for the Jets, you know. And I think the one question that, that concerns me is how are they going to get that offensive line going? You know, sure. offensive line's key. You've got to be able to block your quarterback. You've got to be able to, to, be able to, to block the run be able to protect your quarterback, for your quarterback to be able to have time to throw and make those plays. And that's the problem with the Giants right now. You know, the Giants The Giants are in the same situation. So about that, we'll get to that, seg that part of the, the segment later. So the fourth round pick, the, uh, the Oakland Raiders are a controversial team. They just signed um, Antonio Brown after giving up Amari uh, Cooper. As you all folks remember, they traded Khalil Mack. They let, released him. They, they traded Amari Cooper to the Cowboys. He goes to the Cowboys. Second half of last year, it puts up some big numbers. What do you think? You know, the fourth-round pick, everyone's talking about how John Gruden is not living up to expectations. He's not – the team's not performing as well as they expect it to be. You know, you've got a mid-aged quarterback and Derek Carr – and David Carr, Derek Carr, great player out of Fresno State. You know, you've got Marshawn Lynch, who just retired. You know, Doug Martin in there. You know, and they got a lot of good young wide receivers there, and they got some good veterans in there. So, you know, now is the big thing. You know, they take Clemson, I have to tell you, has some great defensive players. They just drafted a guy in the fourth round, 6'4", 264 pounds, um, an efficient pass rusher. He brings – he's – he has incredible speed. He's a speedy pass rusher, and they take Clinton Farrell. What do you think he brings to that Oakland Raiders uh, young and budding defense, along with uh, De Der uh, Derek Carr and uh, and uh, Antonio Brown in that offense? What do you think this brings to this Oakland Raiders team? Well, now that they have Antonio Brown, the offense is probably going to be improved if Derek Carr lives up to what he <laughs> should. I mean, he should be playing better because he hasn't been playing – that you know, well. the offensive line, you know, last year you guys all saw, you know, they took that guy Colton Miller out of UCLA. He's big, 6'8", 315 pounds, supposed to be a great blocker, you know. And you guys, you guys, we made a lot of moves. They signed a lot of players. And there's been a lot of hype going on in this year's draft, a lot of trades. So now let's lead you two to the fifth-round pick. Take uh, supposedly the best sideline-to-sideline um, -side line line linebacker, top-speed guy. He's is great size, and he's great in coverage. They take the Bucks take Dev, Devin White out of LSU. What do you think of this guy and this uh, uh, Buccaneers defense with uh, Jason Pierre-Paul and uh, um, and uh, um, William Golston and uh, a few of those guys out there and uh, Kwan Alexander? What do you think this guy Devin White brings? He brings a lot of uh, competitiveness. And he, and the, the departure of Kawan Alexander, they go out and they sign this guy, and they draft him, and he'll bring a lot of, he's supposed to be fitting really well in Todd Bowles' 3-4 uh, defense out in Tampa Bay. What do you think Devin White's going to do out there? Um, I think he'll be pretty effective. I mean, how has the Buccaneers' defense been? Have they been? I mean, good? the Buccaneers, you know, they go out and they take Mark, the Jameis Winston, few years ago there have been a lot of things going on there and over the last few years with uh, a lot of coaching changes going from Greg Schiano to Lovie Smith to Dick Cotter you know and all these guys and it's been a bit of a transition down there you know you got Mike Evans who's a great wide receiver you got a lot of talent in OJ Howard and and Austin Howard 
and you know it's a lot of a lot of a lot of excitement in in the NFC South. I think the NFC South is the best division in football. Yeah. You know, you got Atlanta, who's pretty competitive. You got the Saints, who have some amazing, amazing weapons. Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, Ted Ginn Jr. I mean, they, th- that team is powerful. I mean, you got a great defense, you know, with um, with Okafor and and Deion Jordan and all these guys. So now let's talk some Giants football here. Giants, the most surprising pick of the draft. Sixth round pick. Everyone's talking about Dwayne Haskins going to the Giants or Josh Allen going to the Giants. Jones picking 17. The fear of two teams. Want, there were two teams that wanted to take Jones. Redskins, the Dolphins. So the Giants go out and they get Daniel Jones. A well-built quarterback, 6'5", 221 pounds out of Duke. Faced a lot of adversity in Duke and, and was trained by Daniel Calcliffe, the head coach of Duke, who was also the coach for Manning, at the head coach of Ole Miss when Manning was there, when he attended college there, and he was the assistant head coach with Peyton Manning as well. And he's had a lot of years of experience working with two of the best quarterbacks of all time. And he's a good, he shows great, he's a great pocket passing quarterback. He has a lot of potential. And he also has a lot of mobility. You see in a lot of the tapes I've watched of him, he has a great feel for timing. He gets the ball out. And, he, and he, he's, he's, in my opinion, when I watched him at practice at the rookie minicamp, Jones is, reminds me a lot of a young Eli Manning and a young Tom Brady. But in a sense that he's more of a mobile quarterback. He's a pocket-passing quarterback, but he also has some mobility. And that's you know, new for the Giants. They and that's key. A, and that's mm-hmm. key. That's one of the most things that you look for a quarterback in this league, to be successful and to win championships. You know, you're looking for a guy who can, who can, who's a pocket passer but is also mobile. You look at a guy like Jared Goff, great, great quarterback. He's great. He's going to be a great player. He's young. He's still learning the game. I think he, he, he's, he's able to – Great pocket ability, and also can mo- and has a lot of mobility. So I think I think it's going to take some time. And as you all saw, folks, now we're going to talk some Giants football here. Um, so surprised by many Giant fans because there was a better quarterback that was still up for grabs. Do you think if the Giants? Did you expect the Giants to draft Daniel Jones? I thought they were going to draft Dwayne Haskins or Josh Allen first. And then maybe get Daniel Jones or another quarterback later on. I felt the same way. But, you know, when I, in my opinion, everyone's talking in New York saying, Dave Gettleman, Dave Gettleman did this. Dave Gettleman made a big mistake. Dave Gettleman didn't do this. You know, Pat Shermer didn't, didn't this is going to hurt their franchise. In my opinion, if a guy has experience and he's faced a lot of adversity and he's mobile and he's a pocket and he's a balanced quarterback that can throw in the pocket – and he's a team player, and he has a passion to win, and he, that fits the values for the Giants. You know, everyone, you think back to 1979. Giants take uh, Phil Simms. Fans were booing him. Look what he does. He goes out there. They, they rebuild. They win two, he wins the Super Bowl, and he beats John Elway and the Denver Broncos. It's true. And I think that the Giants could have gotten Josh Allen. He was the best pass rusher in the draft. Him and Rashawn Gary, two of the best pass rushers in the draft. You yep. know? And, and, you know, but the you trade think, of OP, what were you going to say? Do you think Daniel Jones would be available later on if they had gotten Josh Allen? First? I mean, it's hard to say. You know, we could have taken Josh Rosen. We could have traded a third-round pick and a fifth-round pick for Josh Rosen. And we could have drafted – what we could have done is we could have drafted Josh Allen – and then we could have drafted Jonah Williams, the tackle, and then traded up for traded that pick for DeAndre Baker, and then traded our second round pick, and could have gotten Josh Rosen, and we could have traded, we could have traded, we could have traded Janoris Jenkins to the Cardinals for Josh Rosen. I think there's a lot of speculation, but you know, with young quarterbacks that are just coming off the league. You know, Haskins doesn't have as much experience as Jones. 
Haskins has played only one year of college. Jones has played all four years of college. He's had many years of experience. He's worked and gone to the Manning Academy. So, you know, I think it's going to take some time. And he's learning from the best. He's sitting behind one of the best quarterbacks, in my opinion. When the Giants have the offensive line, when you have an offensive line, and when you have a good pass rush, and you've got some good weapons, that's how you win in football. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, with that being said, you know, the Giants go out and they take Dexter Lawrence, the 17th overall pick, and one of the best pass rushers in the draft, in my opinion, and he's supposed to be a, a edge rusher. He has edge rushing abilities. He's good on, on the run defense. He reminds me a lot of Linval Joseph. Linval Joseph was the kind of player that was what I see in Dexter Lawrence. You know, Dexter Lawrence is 6'5", 340, and I think he's going to be a great player. And so the Giants go. They have their second pick in the draft. They got from the OPJ trade. Everyone thought that they were going to take Rashawn Gary, but they go out and they take Dexter Lawrence. So now we go bounce back to the 30th overall pick. They trade from, from New Orleans. They trade from the Seahawks. Seahawks get, get, their, get a few of their draft picks. They go out and they take the best cornerback in the draft, one of the best cornerbacks in the draft, DeAndre Baker. He reminds me a lot of Asante Samuel. He's small, but he's good at coverage, and his ability to, to play coverage and be able to get after the ball and be able to cover wide receivers, as he has great ability, and I'm really excited for DeAndre Baker to be a part of the Giants. It was a good pick. And what do you think about the third round pick? They go out and they take O'Shane Exeems from Old Dominion, a small school edge rusher, 6'3", 254 pounds, shows a lot of similarity to O.C. Humanyora. He's great mobility. He's, he's supposed to be, he has... He's an edge rusher who needs to prove himself. He is a great run defender, and I think he's a great player. He, he takes really well to coaching. He takes really well and is a student of the game, and he has really strong hands. So, you know, and be able, to be able to have strong hands as an edge rusher, to be that small and to be 6'3", that's, that's, that's incredible ability. You know, you saw, you saw um, O.C. Himanyura. He was drafted third overall out of Troy, out of the University of Troy. He was, he was one of the best defensive players we've ever had in Giants history. So to go into it, guys, I have some more, more information about you here for the Giants. But now let's talk some football. Okay. So anything you, have to, you want to talk to me about that's Giants related? Um, so like Eli Manning. So you, this, you think this is going to be his last year? Listen. Is it official or not? not it's yet? not official. It's not official. It's not official. He hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't said. He hasn't put in his. He hasn't said I'm out. I'm about to retire. He no. hasn't said his retirement date yet. He hasn't said his retirement date yet. Not yet. I think he. Listen. Everyone. Everyone says that. Oh, Giants are done with Eli. Now it's Jones to come in. Listen. I think Eli has one more year left on his contract. This is going to be his year. This is going to be his year to really step it up and really mentor Daniel Jones. And really, I think when you think about it, to be that kind of player, be there for 15 years, never miss the game in, your, in his entire career, win, to go out and win two Super Bowls against Tom Brady, to win the Walter Payton Man of the Year, He's done a lot for this organization, and he's been our guy from the start. When I think about back to when you, I don't know if you remember, but back in 2004, do you remember the time when the Chargers wanted took Eli Manning, and the Giants were going to take Philip Rivers? Yes, then and they the, traded. And then they traded. And then the Giants, Kerry Collins goes out, he releases him the next year. Tom Coughlin comes in; it's his first year as a Giant, as the Giants head coach after a year off back from coaching in Jacksonville. He goes out and he wins. He goes out and he signs. They go out and they sign Kurt Warner. Mm -hmm. Kurt Warner's in there. First six games, he's, first six or eight games he starts. Then they draft Eli Manning. And 
they kind of brought their pieces back together with drafting David Deal, Chris Snee, Justin Tuck. But to go with the Giants, they go and they, they draft Manning. Yes. First eight games of the year, Giants start off four and two or three and one. They're five and seven. Coughlin pulls uh, Kurt Warner into the locker room and says, listen, Manning, listen, Warner, Kurt Warner. I know we're five and seven. You're our quarterback. You've done a good job. You played well. You've given your best effort. But I want to start Eli Manning. I want to start him and see what he's got because we don't know what we got with him. We have, to, we have to see what our future brings with this guy. So from that point on, 15 years later, you think back to that position. That's Eli. Eli's the Kurt Warner. Daniel Jones is the young Eli Manning getting ready to play. And I think this is great. Anything else you have about the Giants? <laughs> um, well, clearly we lost our best wide receiver, but we got Golden Tate. Um, <laughs> still have Sterling Shepard. So we still do have a good receiving core. Listen, but. I think Sterling Shepard, not to be anything, OPJ was too much of a distraction in New York. Great player, yeah. raw talent, natural ability, but, but spent, spent too much of his time partying. I think this was a great trade for the Giants because, A, they got a lot of value. They, they, they filled up their needs by getting Jabril Peppers, who's a younger version of Landon Collins. And they, sign, they go out and they draft OP. They go out and they get some Darius Slayton, who's a steel pick. Um, a lot of people are excited about his ability. And Sterling Shepard... Sterling Shepard, I think, is a lot better than Odell. He's really stepped yeah. it up in the last two, three years. His development as a player is incredible. I mean, just raw talent. He and fits I think, with the team. He fits with the playbook. And he all fits that. with the playbook, yes. You know, OPJ, he's not a loyal player. You know, Tom Brady, Tom Brady, you look at a guy like Tom Brady, you look at a guy like Eli Manning or Andrew Luck or, or Peyton Manning, he's a leader. He is a great, great talent, but he's a leader. He represents his team with class. OPJ didn't do that. And I think Golden Tate was a good pick. I think he was a good signing. Any other things you have to say about the Giants? Well, if Evan Ingram is healthy, then should be a really good offense. I think we're going to have a good, I think we're going to have a really good offense. And I think Will Hernandez is a great player. I think he has a lot of excitement. He has great character, and I think he's going to, he fits well with this organization. Anything else you have to say about the Giants? I think that's about it for the Giants, yep. So I have to ask you some other things. We're going to talk about one more, a few more things before we wrap this up. Um, so the Giants released their, their um, star uh, safety, Landon Collins. A lot of people felt like the Giants were giving away their players. What do you think about getting rid of Landon Collins? Um, I think that was surprising. I mean, he was a great <laughs> player. Didn't he go to the um, He Pro went Bowl? to the Redskins. He went to the Pro Bowl, though, the year before, he was, right? He was a Pro Bowl player. He was. I mean, he talk about a guy who was able to play two positions. A strong safety, being able, a ball hawk safety, able to pick off plays, being able to, great coverage. He was a great cover player. And he was also a good linebacker. He was able to get after the quarterback, be able to stop the run. Very rarely we see a guy who can play two positions like that. He's also a hard hitter, too. He's also a big hard hitter. So if you were to say, how do you think, a question for you, being, both of us being Giant fans, how far away do you think the Giants are from being a winning team, at going back to being a winning team? I think they're going to need a few years with Daniel Jones to get used to the offense. Then like, in about like three years, they might be making the playoffs, hopefully. You know... When you have a young quarterback and when you have a young offensive tackle and you have a young budding defense and, and it takes time, you know, the, the whole rebuilding process takes time. I mean, I think, honestly, I think the Giants, the whole key to, that, to them is drafting. You know, if they can pick up a few, few more free agents and really do well and really mesh well with those guys, I think we could see a great defense building along the way. Any more things you have to ask about the Giants? Uh, I think that's about it. So before we wrap it up, folks, um, those of you who do not know, um, 
This year, um, just recently last night, the Boston Bruins have defeated, have up, have beated, have um, defeated the Columbus Blue Jackets and have won the series four games to two. Um, Boston Bruins go on to face the Carolina Hurricanes, game one, Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time. So it's a lot of excitement going on with sports, and we have the Boston Celtics play tonight, Milwaukee Bucks, and... Um, Aren't the Celtics out? I don't know, but um, with the NBA, um, who do you think... So tonight is oh, the no. games we have tonight is... Um, we have the Celtics and Bucks. Milwaukee leads the series three games to one. Toronto leads the series three games to two against Philly. Denver leads three games to two over the, the Trailblazers. So tonight, game five, big game on the All line right. here. Mawa- uh, Rockets and Warriors, series tied 2-2. Who do you think is going to take this game? I, I want the Rockets to take it, but <laughs> the Warriors are a really good team. Do you think so. the Rockets have the ability – to beat the Golden State Warriors, to beat Steph Curry, to be able to 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 move on and go to the NBA, to go to the conference finals. Do you think they have the ability to beat the Golden State Warriors? I think they do with James Harden. He's an amazing player. I mean, <coughs> as long as they can keep making their shots and stopping Curry from scoring. I mean, the Rockets have been so dominant all year. You know, the Warriors, here's my thing. In, there is not a lot of teams in the Eastern Conference that are competitive enough to play the to to play the Warriors. The Warriors are the powerhouse team of basketball. And I think think about it this way. Who do you think is going to be in the NBA Finals this year? What are your predictions in the NBA Finals for this year? Who do you think is going to play in the Finals this year? Um I think it's going to be the Bucks and either the Warriors or the Rockets, I don't know. My pick for this year's NBA Finals is the Warriors and Warriors, Warriors, Bucks. I think, listen, Anis Antetokounmpo, great player, really, really young stud player, tall, he can rebound, he can shoot, he can do it all. He is, he is Mr. Everything. This guy is dominant. I can't wait to see more of this guy and what he's going to bring to this team and what he's going to bring to the league. I really see the Bucks winning it all this year, taking it four games to two, one final score of game six, War, Bucks 107, Warriors 198. That's my prediction. I think Giannis Antetokounmpo is MVP. So with folks, this is... Zach Gittleman. This is Peter Plumba. And we'll see you next time on What's Cooking at Riverview Sports Edition. Hope you have a good day and happy spring to you all. We'll be back next time.